Hello everyone, welcome to the Build Up Show. Liverpool's pre-season rumbles on towards Geneva and Olympic Lyonnais. I am your host Paul Machen. I am joined by James Redman. We will talk about this game in a second, but I just want to highlight that this video is sponsored this week by One Football, the incredible football app for all of your football needs. Football, football, football. Uh, there'll be a link to download it in the uh, description underneath this video. If you want to keep up to date with everything that's happened around the Mighty Reds or football in general, you can follow everything. It's got match day centres, it's got thought, opinions, uh, blogs, etc., etc. So they've got you covered from all angles. Go and download the app and let us know how you're getting on with it in the comments section underneath. Anyway, um, Leon, James, um, Liverpool have been at the training camp this week in yeah. Evian. Finally, I think Jürgen, <coughs> this is what he lives for. Um, uh -huh. It's been a little bit of a... I, Underwhelming. I'm yeah, I, look, I'm trying not to get sucked into this really negative rhetoric around uh, around everything Liverpool do at the moment because you know I got <laughs> a few people know I got I got my Twitter account locked for reasons I won't go into on here because <laughs> people keep telling me stop putting politics on the Redmen YouTube channel. Um, this is I don't like the Prime Minister very much, but we won't dive into it right now. Um, but uh, so I wasn't up to date with quite how miserable everyone was yeah. until I turned it back on again and, and saw it. Um, you're right. I think underwhelming's been the word so yeah. far. I, I'm not sure I necessarily expect it to get much better for this, but yeah. we, like, we need to keep reminding ourselves that this isn't an ex it's not an excuse. We like to see Liverpool win, and that's the point. Yeah. But pre-season, you're not meant to take pre-season pre seriously, and yet lots of people mm. seem to be. Yeah, I, I think that's what it is, and you know, a lot of people do look at this pre-season and they're like, oh, but we need to go and buy players this, that, and the other. The thing is, though, we're going to have some of our star players back at the start of the season. You know, Mane's going to come back, Salah, Firmino, all these players that make such a huge difference. One thing that we lacked against Napoli, for example, was the attack and threat. Yeah. You know, that actual, you know, Origi's good and all, but he's not Firmino, he's not Mane, yeah. he's not Salah. And when them three come in, it's a completely different team. Yeah. Um, well, these, so, are, these are effectively, you know, you look at a team that are as good as us in Serie, in yeah. Serie A. You know yeah. what I mean? And you know, okay, they weren't they're not probably as intense Cot mentioned, not as intensive in their preseason mm -hmm. as maybe we are. They were lacking a few players as well. But again, it's it, it's one of the things we battered them, absolutely battered them in preseason last season. And no yeah. one said it was you know, you can't I don't think you can celebrate the big wins as too too much the same way you can't get too down a downbeat and disheartened by the big defeat. But yeah. I think it's right in saying that, you know, we now know uh, Allison, Firmino, Salah. Shakiri and Keita have all travelled with the squad over to the pre-season training camp. And I've almost forgotten about a few of those lads, particularly Shakiri and Keita, because all the focus has been on the on, on, on the on the front three. So we yeah. know um Manny's gonna be coming in probably at the back end of this week, starting next week. Very, yeah. very tight for the start of the season. Um but yeah, having having the obviously Allison, Firmino, Salabak makes a big difference. But the likes of Shakiri and Keita. I don't think either of them really set the set the, the league alight last year for us, and no. then both of them had little spells. Probably you'd argue Shakiri had more notable spells, yeah. I guess. Um, but this is again, these are there's five lads coming back into training yeah. who were all good enough to start in Liverpool's in Liverpool's first first eleven. Yeah, one hundred percent. You know, you look at the players who we have been starting like Kent and. And you know Wilson, etc. Shakiri's better than both of them players straight off the bat. Yeah. So already that's a big improvement. You look at players like Naby Keita. You know Naby Keita. He's been you know at the end of last season got an injury. Was scoring a few goals before he did yeah. get that injury. He was actually a big loss. You know yeah. if you really think about it, because yeah. he was doing really well. Yeah. And now to have him back, it would be good to get him a few minutes just before the season starts, maybe yeah. or something. You know even if it's just twenty minutes or a half an hour, something like that. It would be just good to get him back into the shape of things instead of throwing. Him in against Man City or not a it, it feels crazy to me that we've got another friendly and it's worth bearing in mind we've had a lot no but mate, mate yeah absolutely yeah. we had another one lined up for next week as well but only because the Huddersfield game was moved to the Friday we cancelled there was one against Schalke at Anfield that was meant to happen midweek oh, next yeah, week as well I remember that so, one but I'm looking at it and going Klopp goes big on these pre-season training camps he loves that Evian camp that's yeah. when he gets to do the intensive work with mm -hmm. the players on the, on the training pitch away from the media glare and what have you it's, I, I think it's balmy that we've got another game, but then again, there must be a reason behind it because Klopp's gone on time on time again. He's mentioned a few times during this tour, particularly over in the States, he's picked the fixtures, he's chosen the tour. This is, yeah. It must be for a reason, but I want to know for, um, for, for you, do you throw any of the big names in for this game? Why not? I mean, I, I suppose not. I, I I don't know who specifically, just because I don't know where the fitness well, levels are. Let's like. just say, yeah, we don't know in the full, yeah. the full, the full fitness. All right, then. So hypothetically, everyone's sound. Yeah. Is this what we're saying? Okay. All right. 
I'd like to see Shakiri play. Mm -hmm. I'd like to get it, see him get a few minutes. I think Alisson, I think that's yeah. quite standard in itself. Yeah. You know, you don't don't need to be a hundred percent at per se. Nope, um and you know what for me now as well? I think for me now he's had quite a bit he's had he, he had quite a bit away, you know what I mean? He's and, the one. He's the one with the, well but Salah to be fair, Salah for me, you know, it's such a fine balance. Because that's where it comes back to me, I think it's mad that we've got this many games. Is because these lads, uh, what's the balance between rest and needing to play? Rest and sharpness is what yeah. we don't understand as fans because we're not sports scientists. Yeah, we're yeah. not in there. We're not into. We, we don't. We, we don't have the analytics. We don't have the data. Because my base logic is it's too soon, <coughs> particularly for Salah okay. and Firmino. Now, now, I suspect we'll we'll see them. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I, I think we might see them off the bench because yeah. you'd like them to have kicked the foot. There's a lot of talk about how seriously we're going to take the charity shield. Yeah, I think we'll take it seriously. I hope we take it seriously. I, I, and by that, what I mean is, I think I, I don't, I don't think Salah and Firmino would play ninety minutes on Sunday, mm -hmm. but I think they will. I think they will start because I think as much as Klopp is being is very good at not. I don't think he rushes players back. Nah, he doesn't. He, you can see with, with a lot of players that he, he just likes to slowly get them back in. You saw it when Sturridge had his fair share of injuries. He slowly got them back in then. Same with all of the players, it's, really. But for me, I think I, I think it's important for us to win that game on Sunday. I don't think it's an important piece of silverware, but I think it's an important marker for the season. Yeah. And I wonder how much... is And, and that's what, what, what we won't know as fans. Is it better, therefore, to give them 20 minutes, uh, 20 minutes, half an yeah. hour uh, against Leon? And then start them, or is it better? Is it better for them to be to have a bit more time off and more time on the training field and say you don't play at all, but you're going cold? I, I, I don't think we're going to know the answer to that. Yeah, I, I think the best option probably would to be a, just give these players that 10, 20 minutes that they'll need. Yeah. I think that's more than enough, as well as training, because if you just throw them in there against Man City, don't get me wrong, you know it'll still be good to see them back, but. You do still want to go and win that game. It it, it sets up you. It sets you up for the season. Yeah. That game and it, it it is a big game in that sense. Um, but it would be good to see players like Firmino and Salah just because we haven't seen that spark yet. Yeah. We haven't seen that spark this season. It'd be good to see. I think it'd settle a few nerves. To be honest, if they yeah. come on, just bag the quick goal. You know, and then and then we go. Okay, yeah, it is yeah, fine. There we go. Every everything's a okay. <laughs> We're all good. <laughs> but it's, then, it's hard because I'm seeing. I'm you know again. What I kind of touched on earlier. I'm seeing the reactions. I'm seeing people losing their. <laughs> People lose their heads over. I, I just finished writing this. I've got a book coming out in the next couple of weeks that, that goes into a lot of the reactions of people throughout the season. Yeah. And the, the thing that gets me and I, I find exhausting is this happens every summer. We see these reactions every, every could because I think people struggle to know the difference a lot of the time between what is a friendly game and what yeah. is a competitive game and, and how you judge them. And it's worth noting, you know, the amount of fitness work that goes into those games and the build up to them, the amount of training they do, they're not treated in the same way as they are. Yeah. And the players look knackered yeah. because. The knackered, but we, I, I, I spoke to Klopp briefly about like the, the the conditions over in the States when they played in Indiana and they played yeah. in Boston. They've been so hot. And they, and everyone's going, oh, it's dead out to play. And I was like, is it a good thing? And he's like, yeah, it's yeah. great for fitness to, to, run, to run around in that. But it saps your energy and it makes it harder. So at this point, we, we it's it's hard for us to judge where, where Liverpool are at. Yeah. Um, one thing that was quite interesting, I think, what, what we've seen, we, we know, I think it's a 29-man squad that's travelled over to the to, for, for the camp in okay. particular. We know... Um, well, Arucci's travelled, which is great news to yeah. see him. Obviously, that could have been a really, really bad injury against yeah. Sevilla. No Curtis Jones, Nat Phillips, or Ben Woodburn. I, I expected that from Nat Phillips and Woodburn. I think it's a bit, it's a shame for Kurt Jones because it kind of shows you that since breaking into that, having that little breakthrough <coughs> last season, it's not quite kicked on for them. Yeah, and Jurgen Klopp said that, didn't he? he? Said, listen, like we don't care how highly rated you are in terms of fans' perspectives, we, we look at what you're doing in training mm -hmm. and if you're not performing to the levels that the other lads are performing, we're not gonna we're not gonna just bring you because of what your name is or whatever. Um it is it is disappointing because I, I, I look at Curtis Jones and I think he's a good young player mm. and I'd like to see a bit of game time from him. But if Klopp is seeing him in training and it's not good enough, mm -hmm. then you've just got to respect the decision. It's 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 interesting because of course we know Seth Vandenberg gone yeah. and Harvey Elliott as well. And we saw him in very, very briefly his first appearance uh, at Murrayfield at the, at the weekend. Looks a very tired young player. Hard to, again, hard to judge on such a short, a small sample size. But it tells you how <coughs> highly rated I think those two lads are that we've bought these two. The kids, yeah. you know, they're both very, very young. They're probably oh, yeah. too young for the first team. Yeah. 
But I think it shows you the mindset that they think these lads are good enough. Yeah. When you've got the likes of, again, Nat Phillips. I don't think Nat Phillips put a foot wrong in pre-season. I thought he had no. an excellent pre-season last year. Mm -hmm. Injuries probably kept him out of first-team action last year. There's lads who, who should be ahead of them in the pecking order. That These these youngsters have come in now. So, I, I'm, I'm particularly Harvey Elliott. I, I don't know whether he'll get a game again. Yeah. I'd imagine he might get similar sort of 15, 20, 20 minutes. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be good to see. You know, Harvey Elliott, he's one of those signings. You know, everyone was a bit like, Oh, who's this kid again? But the thing is, though, if you look at past uh, Liverpool in the past with young players, like yeah, let's uh, here's an example, Deli Ali. Um, we didn't go out and buy him mm -hmm. when he was some big prospect yeah. at MK Dons. Yeah. And look at him now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I'm not saying Harvey Elliott's going to become that, yeah. but I'm just saying it, it's there. We've gone out and bought him. There was big clubs linked to him, PSG, Barcelona, Real Madrid, and we were the ones who swooped in and yeah. got him. And that's a good thing. That's a big club intention, I, yeah. I think, in a way. I, I, and it would be good to see what, he, what he's got to offer. I agree. And, and you know, he looks at the, the lad who's prepared to take his opportunity to yeah. shine as well. And I, what where we are now is we've got, I think we've got our <coughs> first, our, our first team is, is largely set. Yeah. You've got a couple of players you can come in at, you know, you can rotate Gomez and Matip and not see a particularly great drop off, etc. Mm -hmm. Got plenty of options in the in the midfield. Yeah. But we're starting to build this lads behind the lads mm -hmm. who are all capable who are actually probably a bit young. You wouldn't what you wouldn't go right, you're starting the season. Yeah. You're not gonna come in like um Keanu Hoover's not gonna start right back this season. No. He's not gonna have ten games at right back, back no. consecutive unless we have major major injuries. Mm -hmm. And the same goes for for Vandenberg and, and, and Elliot as well and Brewster. But we've now got this we're, we're building the next spine already. And yeah. that's another thing that what preseason's meant to be for is having a look at these things, starting to get this little taste, so you can start to get a sense for the wider the wider picture. Because that's yeah. what Liverpool are now. For so many years, we we were built to like got to try, got to go for immediacy, got yeah. to try and cut corners, got to try and get to the top. Whereas it feels like there's breathing room at the club for for now. The, the, it's been having the, the the life suffocated out of it. I think by a lot of the social media that surrounds. And look, I hate seeing Liverpool not win. I, I'm look, I'm I'm in a re I'm down yeah. in the dumps. Because I've just watched a bunch of Liverpool games where we haven't won, and, I, and, and it's it very hard. Yeah, but it, as well. again, and it's hard. To, it's hard to unpick that because seeing Liverpool lose is it's like hard coded into your DNA. Yeah. To, to have a cloud over your head when it's the like, Reds oh wait, we, we can actually play bad. Like we've actually got that on us to, to play bad. Like I was watching us against Napoli, and I was just thinking like. Yeah. Like is, is is this what I'm actually watching? Like am I seeing these gaps in this the best defence in the league last season? Like am I seeing no, this? Exactly. And and that's that that's what it is. It's it's hard it's hard to it's very hard to be chirpy and upbeat when you're watching that. And you yeah. can see it, you can see from the good thing is, is that you're not getting the Egan Cop coming out and going, <coughs> Yeah, that was boss that, no problems. He's coming out and going, No, nah, it was crap. Yeah. Um but you know, as with anything, the beauty of it being is you want to get the crap stuff out of your system to yeah. some extent and you learn you met but you meant to learn more from your mistakes because you, what what's to be learned? There's nothing to be learned from smashing Napoli five 0 last no. year. No lessons were learned mm -mm. because did it make us more did, did, were we brilliant against Napoli in the Champions League as a result? No, we were crap against Napoli in the Champions League as a result. Uh, and we scraped out of that group because of how poor we were, particularly yeah. away, away from home. So, you, you you know, you've got to go away. You've got to go and give the team a kick up the arse. And hopefully, hopefully it starts with this Leon game. Um, but most importantly, it should hopefully start from the weekend with the, with the charity shield. Yeah. Um, one player we know will, well, a couple of players we know uh, will miss out. Nathaniel Klein, as we know, is going to be out for at least half a year with his ACL. Uh, and Ryan Kent it missed out on the training camp, reportedly due to illness. Um, my immediate reaction when I saw he missed out was, well, that's probably him done and getting ready to be shipped on. Yeah. But uh, on this is Anfield.com, they were saying it's, you know, again, it is reportedly illness, which is a shame because I think this was probably his last chance to shine. Yeah. Now, Again, I spoke to Jürgen about this over in the States and he's very much of the opinion that it's not like I, one game's not going to do it and one training session doesn't do it. They'll they'll have their opinion formed on Ryan Kent already. But from us, I, it does feel a little like you're not going to be able to... I don't think we're going to carry Wilson and Kent. It's always felt like we might keep one or the other. Mm. Um, and this might have been one more time for Ryan Kent just to... Maybe just to tip the scale slightly in his yeah. favour that he's going to miss out on. I, I, I'm quite a fan of, of Ryan Kent. I always have been. I've, I've always seen him. And, and a lot of people have said he's got, not good enough and fair enough. But I just feel he hasn't really been given the chance. I think mm -hmm. he'll loan him out of range as he gets the young player of the year. He proves you wrong there. And then he comes back in pre-season. You can see he gets at defenders. Yeah. He, you know, he really ju just causes problems. And even though... The, the you know the end product might not be quite there Th that that can be worked on that yeah. can be worked on around the best if players. you could combine Harry Wilson and Ryan Kent you'd have an amazing <coughs> player 
it, pretty much, uh, yeah. We, we always say in a about, nutshell. We always say this about Jordan Henderson and John Joe Shelby. Like, <laughs> you know, like if you can combine them, you'd have, you'd have Stephen Gerrard. But, you, but at the John moment, Joe you can't. Shelby, man. Yeah, but you know, it, like... He's got the Ken's got the pace. He's got the direct run. He's got the ability to beat a man. He's yeah. got that X factor that I would I would I, given the choice I'd have him I'd have him over Harry Wilson. But Harry Wilson does have the ability. He's got a greater ability to stick the ball in the back of the net. So it's going to be interesting to see because you know deadline day is closing in, closes net back in the next week just before the season starts. It doesn't look like Liverpool are going to go go again in in the market. So yeah. it will be down to the players there and. Look, we said pre-season. We we can't know unequivocally based on pre-season in any way, shape, or form. But I think as fans, it would will be loads more relaxed about things and loads more encouraged if we just see if we just see a little bit more. You know, as I say, this this is that this is what this game is about. You want to come out of this game regardless of the result. Yeah. I think we could do with a win just for our own morale. Yeah. <laughs> Sat in the but stands not even or just, whatever. Not even just morale. We've got we, we're talking about this game against Man City. If anything, you want to actually be going into that game with good morale yeah. because you want to go into the season with, with yeah. good morale. You want to go into that game as yeah. well because no, you're going to that game down in the dumps, lack of fitness, whatever. It, it just shows. The problem the problem we've got, and I understand why people will be downbeat about it, because logic follows that when you see Liverpool lose games, it yeah. means they're in a bad run of form, mm-hmm. and that means that it, it, it's then going to be harder to win games down the line. Yeah. Whereas I think it's, it's hard right now. We don't know. We can never know, of course, but, but it's hard. To, we've got to, it's worth remembering the pre season. It's just a, it's a different animal. Oh, yeah. It's a different beast because of just how you, how you build up and how you prepare for football matches. And the point is, no one will remember any of these results. If Liverpool win the Charity Shield, yeah. or if Liverpool, you know, or I know I'll remember the Charity Shield if you win the opening couple of games of the league season and you win the Super Cup, etc., etc., etc. Throw all these permutations together, um, but yeah, it would be nice for Liverpool just to win, just to just to round off pre-season, put a big smile on our faces, yeah. and then we can properly buzz and get excited for it the, for the game. It can be the start of the Sheptuple as well. Be the, the, the start of the set up sure. winning all seven trophies Go this ahead. season. I'm bang up for that. I'm bang up for it. Um, yeah, and then the one encouraging thing, of course, Neville Fakir having joined Betis means we won't have the Neville Fakir circus. So there's one note of encouragement ahead of this game. Um, let us know, Eddie, you, you've got in the comments. How are you handling pre season? What do you think about the fact that obviously if they haven't been in great form, does that make you more nervous for the season approaching, more down in the dumps, or are you one of those people who just literally switches off pre season, let it roll off the back as think, we all I think should that's what do? I, yeah. I think that's we what should I, that's do. We should do. Me. Why do we take it so shit? Oh, I know. Because oh. you know we sell out forty thousand capacity stadiums. Yeah. Do you know what I done yesterday? Yeah. I was watching the, the, the game against Napoli, and it, it got to half time. I was just thinking, right, I'm not going to let this stress me out. Yeah. Whack the Xbox on. Turn off HDMI two. Whack the Xbox on. Play a bit of FIFA. Play with Liverpool. Play yeah. with Liverpool. Win Champions League. Win games. Yeah. Win games and yeah. then you're a, you're an happy man at yeah. the end of the day. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But and it's it's the way to be. I think that's what, that's the point. If you can't emotionally handle the stress of preseason, it's worth remembering that you don't need to consume every single second yeah. of it. Switch off because the charity shield and even the charity shield. God almighty, it's mad that we're in a world where we're actually like the charity shields become dead important. I know. <laughs> but like even back in the day, we used to share, used to share it and you'd be like, oh, well, well you, you didn't win the charity shield, who's arsed? Yeah. But I'm asked. I want us to win as many as many shiny silvery things as possible. I was gutted we shared the Western Union Cup. I know, gutted. for fuck's sake. Do you want to the penalty shootout? I go, right lads, we'll go down. We're <laughs> the sport, it's the Sport and Lisbon TV <laughs> who can come and have a, have a penalty shootout against us. We'll decide this now if the players need to rest. Um, but yeah, uh, Leslie, thoughts on anything we discussed in the comments below, score predictions, what 11s you'd like to see and beyond. Then you can tweet us at the Redmen TV as well. And don't forget... Got two amazing things. Obviously, we're sponsored by One Football, but we've got an interview with the boss, the gaffer, the mad Jeremy himself, Jürgen Klopp. Oh is on the RedmenTV.com. He sat down with Chris Page at 20 odd minutes. Uh, it's exclusive on the website. There will be a segment of it going out on YouTube for you to have a little taste of it. But it's brilliant. Talks about tactics, talks about the coaching, talks about the Champions League final and the reactions around that, and builds up towards the new season with an incredible rally and cry. Uh, get over there, start your free month trial. It's it, it, it's brilliant. It's literally what I live for. Is getting that we get occasionally get to sit down with Jürgen he makes me feel better about life <laughs> he just anything. makes you feel better about yeah. life doesn't and he? he will do to you as well so yeah it's completely <laughs> free for the first month go over to the redmentv.com sign up check it out and we'll see you there